What's up, everybody? Brett here, back today playing some more Battle Brothers. After our last pretty exciting episode, it went a little long, but we crushed the Witch's Hut, one of the legendary locations, one of the final battles in the game, one of the hardest battles in the game, and we sort of made it look easy with a little bit of planning. Um, we're going to be headed south today. I'm going to stop by Finsterweiler. And we'll do some of these locations around here. But the end goal is to get to Goldfest after having cleared the rest of this side of the map. And, yeah, just to get there and maybe spend some of this cash we have. That looks like a pretty big stack of something here. See if we can spot them. More Webnecks. I'm not interested in fighting Webnecks. The value just kind of isn't there for us. They give almost no experience. And very little usable loot. And Finsterweiler is kind of a garbage town. I honestly feel like there shouldn't even be a possibility that towns in this game spawn with nothing. Spawn with a little bit, maybe. But spawn with nothing, no. I would, I would hard disagree with that. So, price is here to sell, no doubt trash, so we're not going to sell anything. We'll just see what they want me to do. Another... Hmm. It's like another one of those, yeah, battle sites north of Finsterwaller. Ah. Uh, I'll decline. I would like to do that, but I'd also like to accomplish my goals for today it's gonna lead me back north and chase a halfway across the map we're not doing that bunch of undead around here we could probably pull these guys into the hideout but let's just take this hideout on pretty easy undead fight to start the start the episode I'm happy with that I changed out all of our brothers who had um, injuries from the witch's hut. Everyone in here should be in pretty good shape, relatively speaking. I think everyone has their weaponry, proper weaponry and such back. We kind of feng shui that at the end of the last episode. And it seems like they're on the other side of perhaps a... Looks like maybe... No. I cannot see. It kind of looked like they're on the back side of a cliff. Just a lot of armored weedy gangers. That's all we're really dealing with. So let's soften them up. It's like we kind of always talk about. Make it so that when they hit the front line, they're very squishy. And we can just put them down easily, no problem. Sadly, we're not going to get a chance to see the dagger in action right now. That awesome obsidian dagger. Uh, I think it was uh, in the comments of the last episode. Pointed out that it's kind of like a Tomb King dagger. If you think about the fact that it comes from like, or probably comes from the old empire. I don't think it's a Dov cool thing, right? It's the ancient empire, I believe, in this game's, like, mythology that was messing with all of the, uh, the necromancy that kind of has led to these problems that we have. It's kind of left a little bit open in the lore. But if you have an empire that rules empires, the next step is definitely to see if you can't make it so that you live forever. That's probably a top priority. Still alive, eh? They have Geist in this battle. Should be a little concerned. Though, we've, we've softened them up nicely. So, Thresh is one of the other abilities that we haven't used yet. But it hits all targets around us. So, of course, not something we want to use unless it's necessary. But on a lone wolf brother, it's a pretty great move if you can get the AI to surround you. They used to do that all the time, but not so much anymore. 
See if we can't put a little damage on the fallen hero. Very good. Nice. And we've got to expect them to possess the fallen hero at some point. Let's step back here. Alright, show me what you got. You know what, I'm just going to put shots over here. By far the biggest threat to us. So man, with the Witch's Hut fight completed... Oh, that sucks. That sucks, but at least nobody's on top of him yet. We're gonna see if we can do something about that. I was gonna say, with the Witch's Hut fight completed... Resolve... is kind of one of those stats. It's not dead. But that's the biggest fight that you need Resolve for to, to be prepared. We're freaking out the Necromancer, that's good. Alright, he is possessed. I do not want to step in on him. We can make him waste a turn. I think what we do is we move forward here. Let's get our banner out. Rally, I think he's too far away. He's four spaces away, which isn't too far. I think four spaces, four or five is the maximum number. I'm trying to remember. But what we can do, this is exactly where I was hoping he would move. Bone plating took the first hit. Let's get that kill. Man, I probably should have just broken his shield. Let's see if I can get away with that, and I can. That's just fine. They wasted all of their stuff on that one dude. Take him down, step in. We already know where the possession's going. So it's just stack overwhelm. That's a little frustrating, but we'll be fine. Crossbow point blank didn't get the kill. Edgel can take a couple hits and down that guy goes. Get wreck nerd. It's set to work destroying these guys. There we go. We brought back Edgel. Alright, now we've got two brothers there. Let's stun him. Didn't expect that miss. Jebediah says he's out of here, that's okay. Need to expect the fallen hero to get back up. Yeah. And when he does, we just need to put him right back down. And let's move as far forward as we can. Get our archers in a position to make some moves. That was nice. Yep, he brings him right back. Oh, and he picked up a weapon. Very ominous. There we go. Alright, no more worry on that front. Let's finish him off.
start getting into position here. Good man. I'm not mad at you if you come back. Knew that was going to happen. Just go for the Necro. Yep, we'll take those 58s. And if we reload, we can take another shot. That wasn't cool. There we go, and let's just hope that uh, Ulfric here can finish the fight. Especially if we help him out by giving him a triple surround to do it with. There we go. Alright, and for loot we got almost nothing. The wing mace is valuable, the crowns are good, the ring is good. I mean, whatever. Stuff to sell. We'll make money off of this. Don't really want to fight those 18 Weedy Gangers. And I don't really want to repair this stuff. I will repair the Winged Mace. That's quite expensive. Everything else I think we could pass on. I mean, we would get some stuff from that. And I'm going to feel pretty happy once we clear all of this, uh, this fog. Logan no longer suffers from a bloody nose or a broken nose. It's a miracle. And we're nearly back to Goldfest. A place that's been pretty nice to us. Alright. By the time we get there, it'll be morning, which is great. We can sell our goods. And I'm going to try and move west now. Not to be confused with West Nile virus. Uh, let's take all of that ammo. How are the prices? Bear Hat says 18. Not bad. I'm going to sell the Coddle Dagger. We have one dagger, bro. And he's using a super unique and awesome weapon. Wing mace, you can leave. You are dismissed. Let's sell the signet ring, saber tooth, deform valuables, webbed valuables. What an eclectic uh, collection there. I'm going to sell a couple of these fangs as well. Some of the silk and some of the poison. Yeah, we don't need to clog our inventory that much with these types of goods. Brains as well. Stuff that... I'm going to sell one of these poisons. I don't see myself using that many of them. Although we will use them at some point. Okay, what else? I need the food. I think I just have to buy it. Three, four, five. Yeah, we'll buy all of them. All right, even after all that, we're still sitting pretty at 33 grand. Check the armory. Oh, they're loaded. They've got the stuff. Man, I was hoping for some bigger pieces. This is the biggest thing they have, the heavy lamellar armor. Which is very heavy. Hmm. They also have a full helm. Which I would not hate to buy. 300 here. 300 durability, 20 maximum fatigue. Who could really use it? Probably Ulfric. Anyone else in the front line? I mean, it's better than a lot of what we're using. Like, even Reynolds wearing a 255. Yeah, it is kind of an upgrade for a lot of brothers. Ulfric being probably number one. I would probably just give it straight to Erhamian. And then maybe give his helmet over to Ulfric. How much is it? Is it like five grand? Yeah. We've also got that coat of plates that he's wearing, and it has no augments on it at all. I could just go ahead and give it the serpent skin mantle, and I think I will.
It's a nice 30 uh, durability buff. And let's buy the full helm. I even love the colors on it. Yeah, that's worth pulling the trigger on. Boom. Boom. And this is a 240. I don't think we need it at all. Our brothers that are wearing the kettle hats with mail. I want to say there's something better in that tier. It's, um, where is it? I think we have one. Yes. We want them eventually to be wearing flat tops with mail. But if a noble war starts, um, we can just probably farm those. Jebediah here. 100% a throwing master. Let's just go ahead and give that to him now. Yeah, and he's even over 70 range skill. Let's take a 3 in melee defense. And another 4 in fatigue. Good rolls. No one else needs levels. We're good. Alright. I'm pretty happy with that. Actually, the flat top with closed mail is even better. I totally forgot about this because I almost never get it. I'm looking at the minus two vision for throwing weapon bros. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. It's four grand for this. And I would probably give it to Miguel. And then Miguel's helmet would probably get sold. Although it could be used on a dedicated handgunner. I'm going to pass. I want to keep most of my fortune intact. In case we come across something truly special. I was very much expecting them to give me a Rondo dagger here. Just because I don't need it anymore. Alright. <coughs> Alright. We could... I think there may still be something here. But the only way to get to it would be down here and then to the left or to the right. Is that worth it? Not at all. Will I do it? Probably. We'll clear this last little tiny tidbit here. There might be some fun, you know, desert fights to take. Sure, ancient ruins, why not? Ooh, is that a unique sword lance? Holy crap, Duras, he's a champion. Oh, damn. I've never fought an honor guard champion. That's wild. And we missed both attacks. I need to just let him come closer. I just was feeling it like we wouldn't miss. Alright guys, this is incredibly dangerous. We're going to take this fight as many times as it takes because I am stoked. I don't think I've ever fought an ancient dead champion. I'm trying to remember. I might have. We'll wait. We'll see how they move before we make moves. I want that weapon. It looks awesome. I've never gotten any of the unique ancient dead weapons either. I remember when they first released them and showed them. I thought they were sweet. We need to damage that armor. Because when he gets to the front lines, we need to chop him down. Yeah, we're jumping in. We're going to be faster than them. So we can afford to move in. Man, this may be one of the rare situations where I, every time I face champions, I get a little bit spooked because they're so damn strong. And Honor Guard as well. They just have so much potential to wreck you. That like right now I'm feeling a little bit spooked. Land the stun. I was about to say, that would be amazing. And we're going to come in for the hard flank. Okay. I need to just take this turn as a setup turn. Alright, that armor is done. 
Reload. Shoot. They have no shield, so our handgunners are definitely our big damage dealers. Just shoot into the back there with aerosol. And we've almost got him. Alright, here comes the pain. Somebody's getting wrecked. Oh, nice. Good damage. Ah, oh, wow, wow, wow. Screamer didn't like that. Go for another stun. Try not to get killed. Alright, here we go. Screamer got hit in the head. Yeah, target or Hamian? Damn, Screamer's in a little bit of trouble. Okay. Let's get the... Uh, I should not have switched. That's Tongue. He's a very good archer. Okay, let's see what we can do. The archers are just here to damage armor. We'll shoot here, even though we might hit Urhamian. He's still alive! How much HP does he have? And we need the kills for the resets. But down he goes, and the unique weapon is ours. Let's get out of there with Screamer. Let's not even give them the ability to crush me. And just like that, we're in the back line. I'm going to put some extra damage here because I think Erhamian can just one-shot him. If he can hit him with this weapon. Beautiful. Not quite, but we got the 30% stun. He didn't get a chance to go. Yeah, we'd be getting lucky to not get smashed by those weapons. Considering they have such a high probability of success. Alright, I know we're going to kill a few of these guys this turn. Probably before they even get a chance to do anything. Whiffing at this range feels pretty bad. Sword Lance out. Alright, I'm happy to get some in incidental damage. Alright, that hurt a little bit on Longbeard. Very good. Crushing it. Alright, Longbeard's gotta go. Alright, and I think just like that, we're safe. I'm so stoked to see what the stats are on that thing. I don't know if it's actually a Sword Lance, though. I've seen that weapon model before, but I don't think I've ever had it. Well, I know I've never had it. See, so yeah, I'm curious to see what it is. Ancient Honor Guard's War... So it's a War Scythe. A long pole attached to a curved blade used to deliver deep sweeping strikes over some distance. This exemplar is particularly well crafted. Yeah, we've got to take a look at that. I think it's just straight up a War Scythe. So, same exact damage, a little bit more durability, which you can honestly use, because it's got very low durability. 46 and 104, wow, 16% more damage ignores armor, and then it's 6 lighter. It's not amazing compared to a standard war scythe, but war scythes are great. 
Who are we going to give that to? Somebody who's proficient with melee. Um, I know we were training Arizel to use uh, sword lances. I was hoping to get him a unique sword lance at some point. Organize this. Okay. Just going to check our bros in the back to see who's kind of got the higher of the melee stats. Arizel's okay. Tuna can is fine too. Logan uses an axe. I'm happy with that. Zigzagging off. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. So Longbeard. In my mind, he's a dwarf, so I don't want to give him a a bladed weapon. Yeah. It's either Arizel or Tunican. I think it's gonna be Tunican. Look how sick. Alright. Random fight in the desert produces pretty sweet weapon. And our legend grows, guys. And that's why generally I take random fights. See if we can get something else going like that. And there should be a plenty of time as we travel for our brothers to recover. Yeah, I'm guessing there's nothing here. I still would kind of like to clear this a little. I'm even not even that sure that I can cross over right there, but I want to I want to guarantee that. But yeah, here we go. This might even just be some small island with nothing on it, or it could lead to a huge series of islands. Nope, literally nothing. Alright, and we've really lost nothing by doing this. Except, like, maybe a day's time. If we take another fight here or here, it'll all be worth it. How many hyenas? 24 hyenas. That's a lot of pelts. Not that I necessarily need them right now. I've already got two fur mantles that I'm not even using. And because of that, I should just do this on Miguel. Let's be real. And I could probably do that here to Wybor as well. I think I'm going to take this fight. And because I know I'm going to take this fight, I should probably... And I know I'm going to get more mantles. I should just hook our brothers up. Yeah. How cool would it be if we fought in, like, the water? Like a beach battle. So, I'm seeing three regular hyenas right now. I'm curious if we're going to have a lot of frenzied or if they're all just going to be regular. Oh, Jesus, that's going to make me motion sick. I need to lean back from the computer screen. I think they're all regular hyenas. They're doomed. <laughs> they don't. That means they don't have overwhelm. There we go. Let's put some damage on the board. Let's position ourselves in such a way that we're defending our back line. I'm going to step down here. Nice. I can't step forward in spear wall, so I'm not going to bother. Almost got it. Into an aim shot here. And we missed the aim shot. That feels kind of bad. I don't want to completely disrespect them because there is a hell of a lot of them. But I might just form like two battle lines. One here, one here. And then if they start moving back towards the center, that's fine. We can readjust then. Because there will be overspill. There's 22 of them. They might shut down some of my handguns or something. We'll see.
Yeah, that's kind of what I was worried about, but we might be able to rotate him out and still shoot. There we go. Put him in the dirt. That sucked. That was huge. Do that again. Seeing some pelts. Let's get these guys out of here. Sure, I'll just shoot there and switch out to the sword lance. Let's lock them down and freak them out. He's already running, so we want to take care of that guy. Put some damage on all of them. That way if they try to run, maybe we can cut them all down. Alright, some weird misses here right at the end. Probably should have stepped in one more to lock that guy down. There we go. Hell yeah, we get to see this weapon in action. It did work. I wish it had a little more damage, perhaps, than a standard one. That might make it feel a little more special. Man, by the time they get in on this fight, it's over. I would love for none of them to escape. So I'm going to try and see, like, where are the ones that I want to get rid of that are possibly going to get away from me. This guy right here and this one here are the ones that I don't have locked. Ah, uh, tried. Damn. And for our trouble, I mean, considering, making sure that we kept that into consideration, we got a lot of extra pelts. But we, uh, we should be able to hit that guy with our archers. We'll run him down. All we need is one good shot, so I'll take an aim shot there. We're not going to catch the one that's already running. Uh, we could have dropped a dog there, actually, and cut and have caught him. But I'm good. Just let him go. Pass one more round. All 
I mean, a lot of hyena fur, but also just a ton of acidic saliva. They need to turn that down a little bit. Turn that down. Turn the pelts up. More pelts, please. Easy fight. Did anyone level off of that? We did. We got a level on tongue. Very cool. One in range skill. One in fatigue. Let's give him a little bit more melee skill, perhaps. We're just going to sell all that saliva. What a weird sentence. I feel like that's something they might say in Japan, though. And you got vending machines that sell, like, young ladies' underwear. You probably are making money off of saliva in some way. That would not shock me. Would be cool to do a couple of arena battles. I'm hoping they'll give me a contract to get involved with the Greenskin Invasion. That would be good as well. Before that disappears. They have a Weaponsmith. Maybe we can spend some of our money there. And I'm happy because we made it here while it was still daylight hours. Bear Hat says, sell everything, man. Yeah, I guess I sell the Sword Lance, too, now. Oh, yeah. Get rid of that. And we're back up to 30 grand. We have a few other things we could sell, but I'm going to hold off. Food-wise, we do need a lot of food, but the prices are terrible because of the events they have. We could probably help them by doing the contracts. Hmm. Let's do the arena first. So it looks like we're fighting mercs. Sure. Four mercenaries. And we'll win a piece of gladiator gear. Which I don't think we need at all on any brother. But it could be useful. Um, I would like to keep using Edgel. He's going in. Okay, not, not our boy there. I would also like to keep using Screamer. So let's bring Screamer in. And then I know we have another... Ooh, okay. Arcus needs to get his as well. Let's bring him in. We're just going to try and brute force this one. There's no finesse here. We're going to hit him hard. Nice. Of course, they're all going to apply Overwhelm. Good man. Decapitation. Huge shot there. Okay, we needed to fade some of that. Screamer can take a couple hits. Let's go for a hail shot. And we whiff. God dang. And double decapitations from Edgel. And we smashed him in the head with hail. Alright, that ended up being pretty easy. They focused Screamer. Really hard. Let's see what we get. Another gladiator helmet and Arcus is now an arena fighter. That was something we really wanted. The fight over, you find a few women sauntering upon you in the gladiators. They are practically swooning, faces blushed, and the men take special care of them. A little tired yourself, you have one of the fans help you count inventory. We're the best. That sounds like something I would do in real life. Instead of taking advantage of the situation, I'm like, hey, could you, could you help me count this? Which helmet looks cooler to you guys? I like this one a lot, too. I love the crest. Hmm. 
I like this one for Screamer, and I almost want to put the other one on Tiberius. Kind of doesn't match his armor at all, which sucks. And it messes with his uh, Nimble as well. Ah, oh, man. I mean, this also messes with Screamer's Nimble. He does get penalized. Hmm. I kind of can't help myself, though. <laughs> kind of can't. Oh, well. Let's see what these contracts are. And Finsterweiler, that might be where we want to go anyway. Let's just see what's up with this. I don't remember where that is. Is that backwards? Yeah, we're not going there. We're not doing that. Let's pause it. The other contract, however... For 2k, they want us to drive off Nomads to the west. I'll take that. Oh, nice! You notice the mutt a few miles back and a few miles forward, he's still there. Bobbing and slinking in and out of sight. A mongrel such as he doesn't follow a band of dangerous men for no reason. Maybe someone is feeding it. The company needs a mascot. Take it in. It happens every time! Dang it! A rugged dog such as he would make for a great mascot. The little mutt could definitely boost morale. You order Arcus to feed it some food in the hopes that it'll tag along. He goes out with a scrap of leftovers and crouches down. Good dog. The mongrel sniffs the food then chomps down on it, and the mercenaries hand along with it. The brother jumps back, nestling his arm into his chest as though he might lose it otherwise. The dog, on the other hand, swallows the scrap and then runs off. Damn. Yeah. That one hits a little close to home, considering... I, I know I told you guys my daughter got bit in the face the other day by a strange dog. Not cool. Made me pretty, uh, pretty dad angry. I'll describe it as I was pretty dad angry. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see. Let's give this... Tiberius could use the necklace. Let's give Arcus here and Edgel the dog. That's all fine. Okay, let's go do this. Yeah, and then just a minute ago, my kids were playing outside with our dog. And Tiny, who's like a German Shepherd Husky mix, went to like 21 Serpents. 21. I'll kill the hell out of 21 Serpents. But I'd rather do it during the day. Oh, they have a Blade Dancer. Cool. Well, I'll tell you what then. Maybe we swap up just a little bit here. Let's bring in Miguel. Our resident grenade thrower. And see if we can't burn that Blade Dancer out. I'm going to put in Rodrigo as well. While Arcus heals. I could pull them all into the same fight. That could be pretty fun. But I don't want them to take any of my kills. S some brother undoubtedly is going to get really hurt from this fight. There's just almost no way to prevent it. Their ability to pull one, to grab one brother and just repeatedly pull him back. You just have to cut through them faster than they can kill that one brother. Could use a fire pot here. Would do a lot of work. But we don't really know where that one brother is going to end up. Yeah, we're going in there on the flank on Rodrigo. Wouldn't be surprised to see them pull uh, Rodrigo out.
This is so dangerous. Nice. Getting a couple kills here is great. Start breaking that morale. Yeah, and let's do that as well. Get adrenaline going. Ah, uh, shield wall doesn't matter. They'll just pull him out of it. And we double whiff. Are you serious, man? Oh, no. That's not good. I'm hoping they don't pull him again, because... We can probably save them. They pulled all my archers. That's wild. Damn, I guess I should have left them back. We gotta cut through here. Let's damage all the ones we can around Tongue. Damn it. A little out of position there. We'll see if we can't rotate them out. Let's get in there with Miguel. Longbeard is going to have to rotate himself out. Alright, those misses pretty much spell doom. For Tongue. We had a chance to kill a couple of these guys. Uh, not anymore, however. And I needed Mile to be on the other side. I messed that up. Damn it. And I can't even footwork out of here now because this guy stepped in. Alright. We missed every attack we needed to land. Every single one. Feels super bad. Alright, note to self, don't bring... I didn't realize they could go through my ranks to grab my range bros. I didn't know that was a thing that they could do. But we're almost certainly going to have to take this fight again. Because I don't foresee us... Uh, I don't foresee Tung surviving this next series of salvos. I mean, that's cool and all. We'll drop a dog. Maybe they target the dog instead of him. Hmm. No zombie snakes, unfortunately. Yeah, that sucks. Damn it. If he doesn't die right now... Alright. We'll either try this again or we won't do it at all. This is one of those super high risk, very low reward type of fights. But let's keep our backliners back. I think that's the lesson I just learned here. I did not know they can grab me through my other brothers. I thought they had to grab my frontliners first. Isn't it kind of weird that they can like snake, literally snake past to grab one of the other bros? Yeah, we're going to chill. This time around, we're not moving forward. And then we'll, we'll make some space here. Because, you know, if they pull someone like Wybor back, we're like, okay. Or if they pull Rodrigo, we're like, fine. But you grab, like, Tongue. And he even held out for a while, and we had some play there that we could do.
Rodrigo, I mean, missing his attacks felt pretty bad, too. Why do you hate me, game? Let's freak him out, get some kills. Man, 20 snakes. Alright, I think they're far enough back. That we're kind of safe from them grabbing my backliners. Yeah, I think they're going to prioritize grabbing my frontliners. Sure. Not saying they can't damage Rodrigo and eventually kill him, but it's going to take him a hot second. And if he gets his reach advantage going, they're going to have a hard time hitting him. I don't want to pass here. Let's let them bunch up. Oh, we do not want him to run, however. That would be bad. He needs to get a kill to get his confidence up. Nail it. We wanted to get that kill there. Would also be fine if they start pulling Edgel. We'll wait here. What I'm hoping to see, what I'm looking for is Rodrigo's flag. For him to stabilize. Went for that puncture there. Yeah, and let's use Adrenaline before we get routed. And if we can get a kill on this Serpent right here, we'll do a round swing. We've got enough fatigue. That should stabilize him. Alright, that was pretty pitiful. Hmm. I don't have a good shot in that direction. I have a pretty great shot there, though. Crushed. Alright, we need a hit here. Didn't give him confidence, though. It gave him a little bit of reach advantage. I think 10 and 10. There we go. Just keep rocking their worlds. If they start pulling my backliners loud, now it's not a huge deal. Because we've got their numbers somewhat under control. Still annoying, though. Always disappointing when you miss with, like, a unique weapon. Gotta get Tongue out of there, though. Do work, Aerosol. Yes. Uh, we might be able to rotate and still do some sort of swing. Very nice. And that sort of, I mean, that helps out Rodrigo a little bit. He doesn't seem like he's in danger anymore. I mean, he, he was never in that much danger. Alright, that is not good. Just hoping to get that kill. Get those two. 
Nine to go. And we'll swap there. Into a beautiful three snake hit. And we didn't hit any of them. Give them as many targets as we can. Footwork here, excellent. I know some of you doubted my footwork decision, but on archers, it really is good. It'll save you a lot of heartache. And that was even before serpents were added to the game. Yeah, I, I knew they would do that. Or at least I had a good suspicion that they would just pull me right back in. Godfather style. Smash and smash. Let's come in and help here. And this was a much better representation of how we should have taken the fight. And how it could go. Bill hook him. Damn. That was your chance to get a little revenge. And for our trouble, I haven't even really been looking at what we're getting for this fight. I'm seeing several rainbow scales. We'll step in here, hope to freak him out. We did a little bit. They seem like they have a high chance to drop something. Because I'm looking around and I'm not seeing a lot of, like, empty corpses. They're, they all have dropped something, it seems like. Chop the head off. I'll say, Rodrigo, get your revenge. Five rainbow scales, and we can sell almost all of that. The nearest taxidermy, I think, is at Hakim. Yes. So let's take out this hidden camp. We've got a little more time today. Uh, did anyone take a lot of damage there? We took a good bit of armor damage. On Yaku, we can put in Zigzagonoff. And then on Tongue, we took some damage. We can put in Moody. That seems fine. And then our Hamian here has leveled. I'm still not sure if I want to lock him into this weapon, though. Because if I get a two-handed mace, I want to be able to use that like a unique one. So I think what I'm going to do instead is just go for Killing Frenzy. And that leaves me with Lone Wolf slash a Weapon Mastery for his next level. I was going to say, big rolls, big money, but we didn't quite get there. Foreign Fatigue is good. I'll probably just take a 2 here and a 2 here. I mean, those are just by far and away his most important stats. And for Throwing Brothers. Let's get a little degree of separation here. And I think we're just going to launch Grenades. At the onset of this battle. I don't really want to mess around with Blade Dancers. I've learned my lesson. And there are a lot of dudes here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The Nomads are surprisingly stationary and surprisingly many. But it appears there's a reason for that. You find the Sand Dwellers huddled around a hole in the ground. They've constructed pulleys around it. And are working feverishly to drag up whatever it is they found in the desert. Based upon the grin of the man overseeing the operation, it is no doubt a trove of treasure. You could attack now and face more opposition, or you could wait until they're done and have left with whatever they're digging up. Last time, I did not attack immediately, and I got less loot. We attack now. 
We're going hard. Twenty-three. That's quite the number. They have a lot of archers. I, I'm not sure if we have what we need to force them to us. Let's see how they behave. I kind of want to send Rodrigo just out and ahead. See what kind of mess he can get into. Alright, they're going to send some guys forward. I hope the Blade Dancer comes within grenade range. Either way, we've got a pretty juicy grenade toss here from Jebediah. Let's not get hit with that. And if we could not whiff our handgun shots, Ascari the Traitor's Bane. Alright, this is the one that counts. And we whiff mostly. Okay. Well, I tell you what. Let's do that. Because that seems good. I'm not going to get hit with that. We're going to go ahead and use Adrenaline. I'm going to lock these dudes in. Wow. Okay. Come and get me. We'll step back. I mean, this is what we needed to do. We really need to punish these guys on turn one. Their archers are a little bit scared. Less accurate archers is pretty huge. And four dead on turn one feels great. Four dead and they haven't even really done anything. Oh, hell yeah. Ha <laughs> ha! Awesome. Oh yeah. Now they resurrected with no weapons. That's a little lame. But how cool is that? And they're taking so much damage for us. And forcing these guys to stand in the fire. Wow. Look at all the hits. That's insane. This dagger is awesome. It's obviously situational, but for real though. Let's puncture. And he took out the zombie. You do that. See if we can't isolate that guy. Nice. Good job, Aerosel. Okay. Big shot here. Ugh, don't like that miss. And go for the decapitation. We didn't get it. Hit here would have been great. I feel like these brothers can deal with this guy. And I don't particularly need to throw a grenade. Rodrigo's kind of going a little bit wide here. But I'd like to get him in and on these archers. They could hurt me. I mean, I've kind of left my back line exposed. If they focus fire, they could do some damage.
Mother Sages, don't take my weapon away. And he has bled out. And that's another zombie. Yeah, he went for the big trip. We don't have to hit him very much. Nimble's gonna make his HP go pretty far. Clutch. Super clutch. Alright, we tried to put damage on him. We'll reload. Perfect. I don't really need this guy's armor or anything. Get him with that bleed, Moody. Decapitation. Tie those dudes down. Twenty-six percent chance is not very high. We finally got him breaking a little bit. Yeah, he's gonna be hard to kill. But now that he's wavering, I should be able to go before him with some of my brothers. Ah, uh, not really. I guess Tiberius can go first. Just to apply some overwhelm, he's... Okay, footwork into a triple swing. I expected him just to do it here. But him moving was kind of devastating. We had such a overwhelming position on him. Yeah, let's just help out up there. Currently breaking. We need to get our sword out here. There's only one guy we don't have locked down. Now we don't have two guys. Oh, didn't mean to... God dang it. Just giving him no respect at all. There's that zombie. I wonder if he didn't spawn because I was standing on top of him. Nice. And down he goes. Fifty percent chance on him, might as well. And we are channeling the dark arts. with this dagger and I'm all about it I kinda have high hopes that we're gonna get some good loot from this fight something unique of course that's, that's generally what I mean nowadays when I say good loot cause we're at the point where these guys aren't gonna drop anything we need But when I see Blade Dancer, I expect to get something good. I mean, it's a lot of money. A lot of money's worth of stuff. And we're getting paid to do it. Oh, we gained two silverware from doing that. So the nomad slain you, you naturally. Go see what the hell they were digging out of the earth. You stand over the pulley they rigged up and stare into the hole. A chest can be seen with ropes already bound around it. You thank the dead nomads for all the work they've done. 
Then turn to easily pull the chest up and out of the ground. You open to find two silverware. I live in San Antonio. There is an antique shop next to the Alamo that I've been to a few times that sells like really high-end stuff, like antique jewelry. Like no cheap stuff. No, no, nothing at all is cheap there. And they have like legit silverware, like $10,000 sets of silverware and up. And it is incredible. I'm so like jealous every time I see it. We'll sell that there. Sell, sell, sell. I don't know what kind of baller you got to be to have some ridiculous silverware like that. A millionaire, most likely. And then to use it? Oh, that would stress me out. That would stress me out. 38 grand is what we're currently rocking, and we need all the tools we can get. Buy an extra one there. We need the food. Get up to six days. Can we get up to seven? Not quite. We could probably go into the arena one more time. We fixed their ambush trade routes. The Vizier is Lawman. I accept. So, we'll definitely put Edgel in again. Ooh, he's about to level also. Who else did we put in? Uh, Tiberius could go in. Arcus is a brother. He got up to five. There was... Man, who else do we have? Screamer? Yeah, we want Screamer in. He's still a little bit hurt, but I don't think it matters. And then we need to give you another grenade. There we go. Let me just double check. I feel like I did that too quickly. Let's do it. Yeah, this shouldn't be a problem. I don't like my movement there. I, I basically blocked Edgel from getting an attack off. Ooh, that hurt. And when we're attacking heavily armored units, we will, of course, be favoring the puncture. And two levels, one on Edgel, one on Screamer. That was worth it by itself. Plus the fat loot. Thank you so much. That'll pay for some of the taxidermy we're about to go do. You can have the scary necklace. And that's Edgel's level 11. So, Lone Wolf on him. Guaranteed. And then lastly... We have options. I'm going to think about that for a sec. Let's take the three in melee skill. Take the three in melee defense. And damn, I'm tempted because over the fatigue even. I'm going to take the fatigue here. Just because he needs every point he can get to wear this heavy, heavy armor. What are we taking lastly on Edgel? That'll make him an efficient lone wolf, bro. Rotation is for brothers who are going to sit in the front lines. And even though we've been doing that a lot, as I've said many times, there's going to be a point where we're not going to do that anymore. Our lone wolf brothers are going to deploy far away. On the first turn, we're just going to send them straight out and try and keep them separate and pull as much of the enemy forces away from the main force as possible. Hmm. I don't even hate stuff like Fortified Mind on lone wolves. Just making them so that they're basically unbreakable. I kind of wish I had that on Rodrigo, but he's naturally pretty high. Let's see, Screamer, let's level him up real quick. Get another one in melee skill. Let's take a one in melee defense. One in fatigue, sure. Yeah, what do we do here? I don't hate Steel Brow. 
I don't hate nine lives. Adrenaline. Um, don't hate fearsome. Indomitable might have been an easy decision for me back in the day, but it's not really anymore. I actually, like I said, I don't hate fortified mine. Just get him huge resolve. This is the only way a guy in an armor like this dies, is he gets broken. And what Lone Wolf will give him is a bonus 15% to his resolve. Which is not a huge number. Guys, I'm going to do it. It's a bit unorthodox, but fortify mind. Putting him up to 62 resolve with Lone Wolf, he just won't break. And that'll be, that'll be huge for him. And he'll just be able to be that kind of like Titan type character that we are going to need him to be in the late game. Surrounded by dudes and just chopping, not dying. Yeah, that's what we need. I'm cool with that. Hopefully y'all are as well. And we're just about done for today. I did want to come over here to Hakeem, our Ramal, and see if we can't do some taxidermy before we leave for today. Maybe spend some of my gross riches at their armory. Ah, uh, we're going to get there at night. That's all right. We'll just camp for a bit. Let's just chill. We have some brothers in need of healing anyway. And as always, let's just see what's in the marketplace first. They're looking to buy here. I don't have a lot to sell, sadly. I have a few things I could just get rid of without even really needing to hesitate. Seven days worth of food. Very good. Check the armory before we spend a bunch of money. Nope. They're, they have ambush trade routes as well. Okay. Bone plating for sure. Craft it. kind of seeing what else is, is here. Protective runes and sigils. That's one I haven't seen in a hot second. This is very Warhammer like 40k. Man, if I had like a battle priest, if we were able to do our Warhammer theme. So plus 20 resolve at morale checks against fear, panic, or mind control effects. It's so cool. I always make it. I'm not going to not make it. Someone's armor is getting that. Craft it. Craft it and don't look back. We're here to make cool stuff and do cool stuff. Apothecary's Miracle. A powerful remedy against many common illnesses and diseases. To reduce inflammation and to support the body's natural healing. Characters treated with this drug will recover faster from injuries. I kind of like that. Let's make one of those. Two hyena furs. A serpent skin mantle. And if we had gotten Battle Brother, I would have made him an unhold, uh, hide, heavy war dog armor. I'm going to craft it just to have. And also just to kind of unlock the recipe. I could make some of these quivers and stuff. I'm not going to do that. Visit the Alchemist in case they have some rare handgun or something. And we may as well see what kind of contracts they have. You want me to go to low and scants? Which is up north, kind of where I want to go anyway. I wanted to go to low and scants, Griffin Wall, Wolfenstein, and see if they couldn't help me spend my money. And they just want me to go into the desert and kill these dudes. I might just do that off camera, guys. We're already running a bit long today. Or maybe not. We'll see. What could we add the protective runes to? The only armor that I don't have anything on is this one. And it would look probably pretty sweet on that. It would look extra sweet on like this corn looking armor. Oh, it covers up the cool little, like, square pauldron thingies. 
I don't even know what you would call those. There to protect like your shoulder joints, like the weak spots in your armor. Let's just crush this. A little bonus battle. I'm not doing nothing right now. I got a second. Come to me, weaklings. This is a pretty good episode, I feel like. We got a lot of stuff done. Tons of taxidermy stuff made. Multiple good arena battles. Won some gladiators gear. Killed a blade dancer. Killed a champion honor guard. And got some unique loot for that. I mean, we did work. Just spread the love around a little bit. Shoot here in the off chance we break him. Our whole game plan changes once we start using the Lone Wolves. The cool thing about the peasant background is that we have so many brothers on the battlefield that even if we split off four of them as four separate Lone Wolves and try to encourage the AI to, to take all those different fights on every side of the map, which hopefully is enough to confuse them, it's kind of untested at the moment. But once we do that, we still have a sizable, like, center contingent that can rain fire down on the AI while it tries to figure out what the hell we're doing. Backline's exposed, but these are not the enemies that are going to punish this. If they had our blisters, we'd be a little more concerned. All right, give me the zombies. We'll just shoot at that guy. I really wish this weapon was on a brother that had like really high melee skill. Because it's too cool of a weapon to not be dependable. I'm about to say, let's get some kills and get some resets. Don't really want to throw here. Just kind of a waste of ammo. That's beautiful. Like a glove. Name that movie. Oh, without a weapon though. Not as good. I was starting to wonder if the zombies could come back with weapons. I mean, dang. Good hit. I'm very happy. Because Tiberius is one of those brothers who's got good enough melee skill to make this weapon work. I mean, we could have just as easily had a dagger bro who sucked. And that's fortunately not what happened. She's gonna step in and get this around. I'm about to say, please, let's just end this. This farce. I was just trying to think if there was any, like, legendary battle that we have yet to do where... I'm not gonna do... 
Let's just punch him. Where the dagger might come in handy, but sadly there isn't. Just in the wars. It's not going to help us in the Kraken or the Ratchetgeist fight or the, uh, the fight against the Emperor. None of that. Thank you, Ak. Nailed it. And for our trouble, very worthwhile loot. Almost a full stack of tools, too. I don't like this big spot here in the middle of my map. My map is getting cleared. We've got a big space up top. But we've already done the Aerojock battle, so there's... I mean, I guess there's a chance that the... Uh, didn't want to go there. That the the black monolith could spawn up there. I suppose there is a chance of that. I think we need to just sell off more of these uh, slightly useless trade goods there. And we've managed to make a lot of money today. While still spending quite a bit. Still no deliveries from the armory. You know what? Oh, they don't have that contract anymore. Let's just go to low and scans real quick. I've got a good feeling. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm calling it. There's a weaponsmith and an armor there. Let's buy something cool. And I really want to go back over here and start killing more orcs. So I'm hoping they'll give me some contracts to go into the wilderness as yet unexplored. Because there's still, to my mind right now, I think there's four legendary locations we haven't found. That's a rough count that I just did. But I think that's right. And they are currently being raided. I'm just never going to get any good loot, guys. It feels so bad. Alright. Search the battle site. Something we've been doing. We're going to find these orcs, and then we're going to uh, leave for today. Hour and a half, I think, is pretty good. We've done this already. Oh, unfortunately, Mal slipped on the bloody mud and fell face first into an orc warrior's open maw. He suffered some injuries. Wow. We find some tracks. We're going to track them. Uh, Mal is in the front line, so he's going to have to come out. Let's bring in Jake. As the Sigmarite, I feel like it's pretty cool that he gets the uh, the runes would like to bring Jedediah back in over probably no not over Erhamian over Miguel yeah Miles is very close to his 11 and we did get a level on Tunican as well let's give him his killing frenzy Three in range skill. Man, he really doesn't need any more fatigue, does he? Could use a little more initiative. And I'll take the two in melee skill. Let's make him at least viable. We could probably get him up to 70. I mean, I know we can. We can get him up to 70 pretty easily. Let's track these footprints. See what kind of force we're dealing with. And we'll call it quits for today. Easy, easy fight. And a goblin overseer. We've been looking for this forever. I am stoked about that. We might finally be able to get an impaler for Aerosel. 
And I'd like to get a couple impalers. That way I have the option, like I've been wanting, to switch between crossbows and handguns whenever I feel like it's appropriate. But yeah, guys, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming. And as always, y'all, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.